Okay, thank you, Tony, and thank you to the panel. And um, I'd really like to thank everyone. It's been a really amazing day today. We've had um, a really inspiring and 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 um, an and informative uh, talk from um, from from uh, Awan Majumdar, and then we had the panel on the challenge, and now the panel on uh, resource and uh, resource extraction industries. Um, it's really been a, a great day. And um, what I wanted to do was actually just summarize some of the take home messages that we have uh, from, from today. Um, I uh, guess, give me a second here. Um, this is, this uh, slide has been compiled by um, Eric McShane, a, a student here, and has really done a fantastic job of, of summarizing in, in one slide what we've heard today and some of the take home messages. So just to, to finish off, I'd like to just go through some of these. Um, I think that the, the, the first one, I think, is the, is the scale of things. I mean, decarbonization is a gigaton scale problem, requires a broad array of solutions um, and a, across a whole set of, of deployment of, of all sorts of technologies. And I think actually this is one of the biggest things I got out of Ron's presentation. I always hear about scale and so on and so forth, but he really um, he showed it today. I think you know when he said that you know to just um, ele ele electrify, for example, the steel industry, it requires a whole new electric grid. I mean, it really sort of brought home, I think, the scale of things. Um, and then um, the the second point here, the novel synthetic and process engineering approaches needed to reduce ingust industrial GHG emissions from the big three. And I think these, this big three is what we are looking at in this meeting, actually, amongst others, you know, iron and steel, chemicals and plastics and, and, uh, and cement. So um, we, we, we've heard that. Um, I think the next point here, um, heat, the idea about heat, heat generation accounts for a large portion of industrial CO2 emissions, requires further R&D and electrified heat and heat replacement technologies. So I think this is going to be a common theme throughout the meeting, actually. And I think uh, on the last day, we'll hear about some other heat technologies. How do we get to the, the very high temperatures? How do we get the heat to generate the very high temperatures we need um, for industrial processes? And, and um, this was touched on, I think, today. Um, the next point was uh, important to consider short and long term solutions based on readiness. Um, we did hear a, you know, a lot about, you know, where are we at on technology readiness levels? Sometimes we're at the beginning, sometimes we're at the end. And, um, but, you know, we might sometimes need to, to deploy um, nascent technologies to, to, that will benefit from cost reductions, that, and, and then we, we can get learning curves over time. So, um, and I think this comes to the next point about collaboration, how Stanford can help, or how universities can help. And I think, um, you know, to get the, to try and reduce those learning curves and try and get things done as quickly as possible, is collaboration between industry and national labs and universities um, can really help in this innovation and deployment. And then it was also, you know, talked about how we can develop entrepreneurs about this just happened a few minutes ago in the, in the last panel, you know, discussing about developing entrepreneurs who can create these disruptive green tech um, companies and how then how they all fit into this innovation innovation change. Um, the, um, the last point here is about mining. This is a point that was um, some information that was given by uh, Jill that 11% of the global energy consumption is in the mining industry. Um, electricity is the largest component of the energy demand in mining. And, um, you know, she was saying how uh, we need so much electricity to, to crush and to and, and, and to, to get the the um, materials out. There's also the processing that's more sometimes on the heat side of things. But can we deploy renewable energy um, to mining uh, sites with storage to match uh, demand? Um, I think there were many other examples um, during the day of, of where electrification can make a can have a big impact and. Um, uh, I think it's we've had a great first day, and um, actually, as I as I um, 
finish off here, I would like to say that we've got two more days of this. Um, we've got tomorrow, we'll be looking at two more sets of industries. We're looking at uh, refining and chemicals. And then uh, after the break, we'll, we'll talk about uh, steel, the steel and cement industries. And then on the, the final day, we will try and pull everything together actually and look at some of the common themes and potential solutions and then have a session at the end looking at, um, at um, opportunities for, for academic research. So um, we, I think that will probably, we're, we're a couple of minutes early, but um, that's probably all we had to, um, for this, uh, what I would, um, what I would just offer again is the opportunity if you, any of you want to have sort of private conversations between yourselves, we do have this opportunity for networking. If you just send a chat to Evan Schwartz, he can set up a private breakout room for you if you want to have uh, um, any sort of, you know, smaller conversations at the end of today. So I think with that, um, I think I'll close the, 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 the day and thank again all our speakers, our panelists, um, all of you in the audience for, for participating. And um, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. So with that, I'll, I'll sign off. Okay, thank you.